This is Star Talk, and I can't do that without Chuck Nice. Chuck, hey Neil, with me, yes. with me on this. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah. So uh, much what fun are, these are. So much uh, fun. And I got a segment here. It's on the space time continuum. All right, that's I, I'm I'm cool with that. You've I'm heard like, that? You've heard are that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it is only the premise of every freaking sci-fi thing ever. Yes, yes. And I just want to. I, I just want to ground it. Travel. I just want to ground it in a few ways that okay. I don't think people spend time doing. Uh -oh. So let's let's think are you, this. Are you going to ruin space time the way no, you no, do Pluto? Is that what's going to happen right now? No, nothing I can do can help Pluto. Just so you know, <laughs> it, it's out of my hands. <laughs> so here we go. Um, 1905. You should know immediately. One thing should know in your head. 1905. Einstein comes out with this special theory of relativity. Right. Okay. Set in fact, the world it's not. On fire. It's not what he called it. It was the paper that delivered it to us is called On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies. And no one wanted to recite that, so it was just called Special Relativity. But that's what it is, because it's all about the relativity of motion and time, okay? Right. So, what it did was codify the fact that, that spatial dimensions need a four, the three spatial dimensions, you know, height, width, and depth, need a fourth dimension to localize it in any spatial system you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And since you needed time, then it's a space-time system. So, 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 it sounds like it's weird. Like, what are you doing, Einstein? You know, leave me alone with my height, width, and depth. But it turns out we have always thought about life in four dimensions. Always. And here's an example of why. If I say to you, Chuck, I'll meet you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I'll say, great, what are we doing? I'm so excited to find out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I love uh, when you surprise me like this. Well, okay, okay, I can do that, but I'll say, all right, so that's fine. I'll, I'll meet you at the corner of, of Fifth Avenue and 34th Street. Okay. What's your when? next question to me? And you know, when, because I don't want to stay there all day waiting <laughs> for you. So you knew that giving you those coordinates, right, Earth surface, 33rd Street, 3rd, uh, 5th Avenue, 34th Street, you knew that's insufficient for us to actually meet. Absolutely. You're going to say, when? Bada bing! The time coordinate just got slapped on there. Did you just bada bing space time? <laughs> you said aloud. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did bada bing space time. All right. That's awesome. Uh, uh, you know, is, is that a, is that forgivable to you? Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, and you can reverse that, right? I can say, uh, Chuck, I'll meet you at twelve noon tomorrow. And, okay. And your next question to me is, uh, when or where? I where? just said when. Okay, where? Where exactly? So we cannot meet unless the spatial coordinate is specified and the temporal coordinate. Is, spe is specified. Oh, and by the way, because we're all kind of stuck on Earth's surface, if you want to do the full up three dimensional meet in space, I would say I'll meet you at fifty uh, at Fifth Avenue, thirty fourth Street, one hundred and seven floors up. Okay, or eighty six floors up. That would be the Empire State Building because that's the coordinate of the Empire State Building. So I give one dimension, the other dimension, and then a height dimension. Those are all three dimensions. Often. You don't give the height dimension because you're just meeting on the street. Right. It's just implicit. Yes, we're going to meet on Earth's surface this time. <laughs> right, right. That one is an easy one to just accept as a given. But technically, if you wanted all three, uh, if you wanted to do it full up, you give three dimensions. Earth's surface, uh, 34th Street, 5th Avenue, and at a, at a time. So we already knew this, but no one thought about it that way. Now, here are the consequences of that. If you're crossing the street, and then a minute later, a truck uh, go, drives down the street, for you were in the same place as that truck. Right. When you were right. in the middle of the street. At the right time, though. I was in that same place. <laughs> I mean, the right time meaning that's not where the truck is at that time. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. So I don't want to say you were in the same place at the wrong time. You were in the same place at the right at time. The right. Okay. Time. <laughs> so, so off we are always in the same place as each other, but it doesn't mean anything until you're there at the same time. So I just want to drive home that 
concept. So now let's go to sci-fi movies. Uh, how about Back to the Future, one of the greatest sort of thought through time travel stories there are. Uh, including the Terminator, I think thought through time travel very Pretty hard. Well. On, yeah, they, they did, did, did all right. Yeah, uh, I have an issue. Wait, I, I have an issue um, with with Arnold. Um, yeah, I, what is it? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me now. Why do you have a problem? So on the first, the, 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 the first. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you, dude. The, the, he, he goes back in time to kill uh, the the possible parents of of, of the, John Connor, the, the, the leader of the of the new of the uh, movement of the resistance. But all he had to do is prevent his the parents from meeting each other. I mean, you, you can go back four generations earlier and just put two people on a different train so they never meet, and that entire genetic lineage never exists. Right. right. So this idea that he's got to kill them and it's going to be all bloody, that made it like a violent movie. But it could have been done a little more uh, with, with less blood and gore. Um, where was I? Oh, so here's what you have to be concerned about. Let's go to Back to the Future. When uh, Mar Marty. Yeah. G give me some Doc Brown yeah. here. Uh, Marty, it's Christmas <laughs> time. <laughs> now, now I'm in the mood. Thank right. you. <laughs> all right. Get in the car, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> So, so there's Marty, and he's being chased by the Libyan terrorists, okay? That's right, um, that's right. And in the parking lot, in the Twin Pines parking lot, all right. And then he, 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 there's a date in there from 1955, and he goes back in time to 1955, okay? And he lands in the Twin Pines Ranch, because as we know, all good farmland becomes strip malls, all right, in modern times. All right, okay. Uh, what they didn't address is the fact that he would only land in that ranch if he goes back to when Earth was in the same place in its orbit. Ooh. He would have to be traveling on the anniversary of the date that he was that uh, of when he left. Right. So that Earth is back where it is so that when he goes back in time, he doesn't end up suffocating in the vacuum of space. Oh man, that, first of all, would be the best time travel short film <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Marty, I discovered the secrets of time travel, Marty, right? Get in the car. <laughs> and then the two of them are just floating in space. The end. The end. <laughs> I didn't think this through, Marty. <laughs> So you need, so so I'm just saying, it's not good enough just to travel back in time. You need something to propel you in space as well. So it's a space time, a space time machine, not just a time machine, because Earth is a moving target. I just want to make that clear. That's really cool, actually. And by the way, just you go back in time, you could still land on Earth, but how is Earth rotated? You could end up in Siberia, in the middle of the ocean, probably, because most of Earth's longitude is spanned by ocean. Um, so, so, I, so I just want to sort of, it's truth in time travel with regard to these space-time coordinates. Now, um, we call these, your, your coordinate in space and your coordinate in time, we call that your world line. Really? Yes, I've it's, never it's heard a cool that term. Wor oh, world line. World so, line. So your world line is where and when you are. Nice. So you can step back and look at everyone's world lines. And the world lines are sort of, it's think of it as sort of some kind of shadow moving through this hyper-coordinate system. And so that way, if I have to go to a, even a higher dimension so I can see your entire world line. If I see your entire world line, you are always being born, you're always living out your life, and you're always right. dying. Right, because I can see the time see coordinate. Time line. Right, the, the, the whole timeline is there in front of me. It's, right, and I can see other people's world lines intersect your world line. Oh, that's when you met your wife. Okay, that's when you were in my office and we recorded that episode. Exactly. So, so imagine the spaghetti picture of all these world lines of human beings interacting. This is cool, and that I don't think I don't I don't know that anyone has actually thought to portray that. No, they have not. That's why I said this is so cool. Because first of all, first I've ever heard of it. But secondly, that is something that nobody's put in sci-fi in terms of. Actually, I take it back. There, there's a couple Star Trek episodes where they play with that, but they don't present it that way. They still present the linear uh, as 
portrayed in different positions. Exactly. So anyhow, so that's that's how that works. And one last point in, in Kurt Vonnegut's novel, Slaughterhouse Five, which it ostensibly takes place in at the end of the Second World War, um, and there's the other sort of historical details I won't get into. What I was most intrigued by is the time travel that goes on in that. And he actually captures that accurately. So what happens is the lead protagonist gets abducted by aliens, gets put in a cage, and that sounds bad, but they said, no, you're still there, you're still being born, you're still dying, and they went outside of his timeline. And so he would sit there and daydream, but by daydreaming, he re was living his life, and he could relive his life multiple exactly. ways and in multiple times. Wait, just real quick, because we're running out of town. Dr. Manhattan, I forgot also, is, the, is a character who lives in his world line and also sees his world line simultaneously. Okay, this is uh, uh, of the uh, Dr. Manhattan from uh, the Watchmen. Watchmen, correct. Yes, 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 excellent. Yeah, he's, that's a pretty powerful guy. Yeah, I mean, man. once you have him, what? Why have anything? Do anything? You know, that's about what anything. I don't like. That's why I don't like Watchmen. Believe it or not, <laughs> for what you just said, because it's like I got Doctor Manhattan. I mean, my We're done here. To, my answer to everything is like, seriously, bro. I got Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, that's the answer, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. it's Doctor Manhattan. It's the over. whole the right. whole thing. So okay. now, one other quick thing. All right. Um, uh, if you have an ant in a in a square, okay, and let's say there's a sticky edge on the square that's basically a prison for the ant you could tell the ant, ant just go up an inch and out and over no but the ant is stuck in two dimensions the two dimensions of the paper that's at length and a, and, and a width okay or height or whatever those two dimensions the ant is stuck if he had access to the if it had access to a third dimension it could escape the prison right right because it could right. find height and escape right so think about it if you are in an actual jail cell and you had access to a fourth dimension, a fourth spatial dimension, you just have to step out of the spatial, into the spatial dimension and step back in and then you just walk out of the prison without ever touching the walls, okay? So that's how you escape prison, just invent a fourth spatial dimension to do that. So then I thought, if you need a spatial dimension for that, then what about our fourth time dimension? Why, why can't we, why can't that work for us the way a fourth spatial dimension, it does. It does, here it is, you ready? So somebody puts you in jail, and now you enter your fourth time dimension, you go to it, return to your time dimension before you were put in prison. Right. Now you're not in prison, you now just escaped the prison. prison. And you do it or after you escape. Uh, so that it's, it works the same way as the spatial dimension if we can invent that. But I'm just, that, that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, a better thing would do would be to return to before you committed the crime and not commit it. Oh, Reverend Chuck, <laughs> <laughs> the moral, the, the moralist, Reverend Chuck. <clears throat> all right, that, all right, Chuck, we gotta uh, quit that. Oh, uh, that was great. Yeah, so this that's uh, another explainer. Space time continuum. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up. <laughs>